What's your view of the current corruption investigations in Turkey and the turmoil that surrounded them? I don't know where to begin. It is certain that there is corruption. Everyone accepts this, from the uneducated to the educated to the elites. Everyone sees and knows what is going on, and no person has the power to cover this up. But I suspect that some people are uncomfortable with the Hizmet movement, and these investigations are being used as a pretext against the movement. The judges and prosecutors overseeing the corruption investigation are being scattered across the country. When these people return to their posts, I suspect they will show their world views and outlooks. From among the judges, prosecutors and police that were reassigned, there will be those who have a nationalist outlook, those sympathetic to the Nationalist Action Party, those sympathetic to the ultranationalists. To show the movement as larger than it is, to justify their argument that the movement comprises an alternative or parallel state, they claim that those officials which they have reassigned and flung across the country all belong to one movement. They are trying to scare people by showing the movement as very big. They are trying to break away AK party supporters who are sympathetic to Hizmet. I suspect that they are using these corruption investigations as an opportunity to show their discomfort with the movement. Perhaps those that are doing this today will regret their actions in the future. However, I believe that the things being done against the movement today are also causing Turkey to lose. These things will have a negative effect on America and the European Union's view of Turkey. Because the actions taken by the government are anti-democratic and are against the rule of law. Almost everyone is saying this today. It's not just the Prime Minister who has accused you, who has said that there is a state within a state operating in Turkey. It's also people who don't have dogs in the fight. Newspapers who aren't affiliated to one side or the other, who have said it would not be conceivable that there be these corruption investigations now if, to be blunt, you had not pulled the trigger. It was leaked to the press that the National Intelligence Institution has informed the Prime Minister about the corruption issues eight to ten months ago. People in the judiciary and the police carried out investigations and launched this case, as their duties normally require. Up until now, bribery, embezzlement, theft and cronyism were regarded as criminal activities. That is why the judiciary and the police went after these people. The investigating prosecutors and police did not know that these misdeeds were no longer considered as crimes and they pursued this matter. This made the government unhappy and, as a result, they are talking about these officials being a state within a state. They are not talking about wrongdoing such as bribery, about the rigging of state bids. These things are being presented as normal and acceptable. It is not possible for these people to take orders from me. This situation has nothing to do with me. As I have previously said, I do not even know 0.1% of those running these investigations. I can say this wholeheartedly. Isn't it also true, though, that once upon a time you did see a common cause with the AK Party, with Recep Tayyip Erdogan, now you have your profound differences of opinion over relations with the Muslim Brotherhood, which you, maybe you think have been too close with Turkey, relations with Israel, which maybe you think have deteriorated under this government, and also uh, the relationship with the Kurds. Would you say that on those three issues, you have now diverged from the AK Party and from Recep Tayyip Erdogan? We have never been completely aligned with one particular party. On the Kurdish issue, we supported a peace process before the government. All I can do is to encourage. 
and I sent a document with recommendations and proposals to the Prime Minister, stating that the region needs to be embraced and its needs met in education, healthcare, religious affairs and security. I said that if you do not embrace these people, those who have been persecuted in the past will carry on and grow their grievances into the future. But these views were not taken up. Perhaps it has been about 10 years since we put our views and recommendations forward, but they have tried to show me as being against the peace process. No, absolutely not. Maybe our method was different to that of the government, but the allegation of the movement being against the peace process is slander. It is an unfair portrayal. It is a form of aggression and attack. A lot of people have said that you have had concerns about this peace process with the PKK, with Erdogan. Is that correct? I did not say anything openly. However, they denounced him as a terrorist at one time, sentenced him to life in prison, even sentenced him to death, though due to the EU's disposition on this matter, they did not proceed. I do not know the rationale, but maybe it was due to the elections. It was to appeal to the PKK, Erdogan and Kurds in that region. Erdogan was unhappy with what we were doing for the Kurdish people. Those in the mountains don't want the terrorism to stop. They are unhappy with activities that seek to build bridges between the Turks and Kurds. Their politics is to keep enmity between Kurdish and Turkish people. The current administration, in order to have good relations, to look good to the Kurds and to get their support in the elections, blamed everything on what they called Hizmet, the community or movement. You're here in the United States now. If you were back in Turkey, we've got two big elections coming up this year. We've got the municipal elections and we've also got the presidential elections. Would you be voting for the AK Party? Would you be voting for Mr. Erdogan to become the next president of Turkey? I have had a chance to vote only once in my life. Either I was in jail, or I was on the run, or I was deprived of those rights. If I will say something, it will be this. Vote for whoever stands for the rule of law and rights, is upright and sound, whoever is respectful of democracy, who gets along with those around him. If I am to say something, it will be this. But I am yet to decide if I will even say this. Other than that, I would consider it an insult against people's foresight and reason to tell them which party to vote for. Everyone can see what is going on.